Yeah, I did it. What the hell is this? Join the case battle on Hellcase.com. Buy a case and compete with other players. If your skin is more expensive, take it all to yourself. <laughs> that was very simple. Hellcase, fill up your inventory with cool loot. Hello everyone. Today's video, it's a new concept. So first of all, you gotta let me know down in the comments what would interest you with that uh, concept. You don't know the concept yet because I didn't explain. So basically, you know that I've been around Counter-Strike for about, I don't know, like I started playing like 20 years ago, literally 25 years ago, like when the game went out and I've started my career when I was really young, when I was 15. So now I'm gonna take you back to the beginning of it, the really beginning of it. So that is called Kenny Stories. So that is the first volume and the title of the video will be Cheat Accusation. So more than a decade ago, Kenny, how did you manage to, to get professional and I kind of fix because as you know, face it was not existing back then. But we had a thing called, that is obviously a title that you know, people that you know, an organization that you know. That was the pretty much the, the also the ancestor of, of face it, which is called ESL. So ESL, to let you know, had like um, a full website with each players of the website registered there, um, their own uh, page that pretty much looked like um, a national TV player page, I would say. So back in the days, that was the biggest flex. Why? Because you had a couple of ladders such as 1v1 op, 1v1 aim, 1v1 this, this, this handgun, 1v1 ladder. You had 2v2, 2v2. You also had like ladder in your like competition in your own countries, like 1v1 op France, 1v1 op Europe as well. So you were playing with all Europeans. And that was the biggest flex because you could get medals, for example, like 10 wins in a row in um, in uh, in 1v1 op ladder and that kind of things. You also also had like penalties for being toxic for example or if you reported and if you if you have like three points or six points of penalties you have your account locked for for a month which is which is actually like i would say that they were dealing better with toxicity than what we're doing nowadays as you know I'm, i tend sometimes to be a bit toxic so i had my account locked really often there was a ranking in each leagues, and that's all you got known back in the days, you know? Uh, you also could create gather, a gather. But my point is, I was young, I uh, wanted to be seen, and I was really good. I was like doing like 15 0, -0 the first. Uh, I, was, I was doing 1v1 op, like picking, challenging the best players in the league and beating them one by one, you know? I got uh, I got a bad reputation really quickly because I was, I was unknown. Uh, I was never visible in any ranking before, and I come here and I beat everyone. So um, considering the small world, World CS was back then, the reputation were going fast, you know, like, and if someone says, ah, this guy is a cheater, and this guy says, he's a cheater, yeah, so everybody thinks he's a cheater, you know, ah, it's not so much different from nowadays, you know, like the things you could have seen with some players such as Zaiwu. My point, my goal was to uh, play with the best, obviously, but uh, back then, there was two systems of anti-cheat. There was the ESL wire anti-cheat, which was not super effective, honestly, and there was the um, anti-cheat stuff. Which means that after each game you played, with your opponents, you need to agree on, yeah, you put the results and everybody on each side need to accept the result. If they don't do and they are bad players, they, the, the result is just like um, automatically accepted after a few days. But at some point, sometimes there were some players doing what we call timetables. Timetables is literally that guy analyzing your demo and ticking every moment where he thinks that you, you've cheated and why. And then you have a staff anti-cheat analyzing an, analyzing that. Um, so obviously afterwards, it's up to human decisions to, to ban people or not. So how did I end up playing um, with cheaters? Because I mean, I, I've ended up playing with cheaters, not on the league, but offside, you know, like doing like some pickup uh, B-Rush. And I was playing with them and I was beating them, <laughs> which is quite funny without cheating, you know, because they were a little bit like the superstars of the of the platform and was best than being with the superstars to be seen, you know? So it didn't help my reputation, uh, but I was playing with, uh, I was playing alone or I was playing with uh, a lot of 2v2 at, the, uh, at that time. And, uh, uh, and with my duo, we are doing really good, you know, but um, I never cheated in those things, never. And uh, I've always been despised by cheaters. And uh, it was actually really frustrating to play against cheaters at some point. But, you know, like at, the, at that time, I was I was really like the beginning of everything. And I was playing so much. I was I was I was really good individually. I was really like like I was meant to be pro at that time, you know, and I was that, that became a dream slowly. But here we go. You see it coming. Um, 
the second step of that was a timetable against myself. So that was the French League. That was the 2v2 French, uh, French League. 2v2 and with my duo we are playing against two guys one of the guy was really like like that with the attitude stuff you know so um he was really mad that we we beat him and he uh i, I told you that um esl was really strict and and they could like lock your account for toxicity but the, the ultimate and the worst things you can get on your own page is the 12 penalty points cheating you can be sure that you are put in the box in the case obviously you cannot play on the uh, on the platform for two years so the accusation of, if i could if i could actually find that timetable i literally debunked i debunked that timetable and said yo if that happened that was because of that of that of that of that i was not chilling obviously so you know like i was like this is crazy and the guy does a timetable really specific saying yeah round five uh one minute 12 in the round he does uh he watching through the wall a little bit like that so yeah that guy those guys do timetable and i'm like no i'm not chilling guys uh this is i did this because of this 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 and then there is the staff on teach it taking taking care of the business afterwards you know like they, they read the timetable and they they speak among each other and they they do their own case and they actually are the judge of that case you know so as i said earlier human mistakes can happen and obviously considering my reputation considering the people i was hanging out with and considering the fact that i was really good really young and really unknown um, well, the judge uh, decided that I was a cheater. So now you might you might think, okay, so Kenny is is a cheater. He has his um, his wall page uh, banned. Everybody can see that. Everybody is like, yeah, guys, I told you that guy is cheating. And you can say you're not cheating, but you have your page writing like 12 PPS cheating. You know, cheating on demo. You might actually think, um, okay, maybe he's he's ducked. Uh, he's not gonna be able to to fulfill his dream. And you might be right. Actually, I've tried everything in my power to get the truth out and get help as much as possible. Uh, at that time, I was actually already starting to flirt with the highest level because I was in a member called Z Wall. Um, so basically, it was a it was a member where all the best players in France, Shox, MK, Ace, all the, the the greatest players in France historically and at that time were happy, were Apex, were gathering together. I started playing there and 95% um, of the of the players were thinking that I was a cheater. So I got I, I got banned from that member a couple of times. You cheat people like Happy, Apex and Yak, uh, mostly those three that helped me a lot uh, building my career. Decided to tell the others, guys, I don't think he's cheating, let's ban him. So I was creating a lot of frustration among people, uh, among people but uh, it is what it is, you know? And I also got my chance to, to, to play my first event, which I won with those guys, so ASP, SF. Another the story that we can tell uh, in, uh, in the next video, SF, Kali, that drama that you probably aware of. So ASP and Apex and Yak supervising me uh, behind me because at that time I was already um, in the in the in the small paper of the best team in the world which was very games and I was being tested there so yeah despite that reputation that I had um, Jerome Yak uh, decided to trust me obviously we went through that video that got me banned he obviously which honestly was not even my best performance at the time I was we won pretty easily but I was not really like my best game you know so he decided that despite my reputation and despite that that things written on my on my forehead eventually this guy is not chilling you know let's give him a chance um i think the connection was first like as human beings you know so now you might be wondering if no one can help me get, getting in ban what can i do i had a great idea of reducing being able to reduce your ban from two years to six months. If my memory is correct, which I'm not entirely sure, uh, but if there was someone actually working back then in the ESL anti cheat staff, I would love to have you down in the comment and let me know we contact you, I swear to God. So ESL put, put in place something called a rehabilitation letter, pretty much. So basically you have, you have a topic. You have, a, you have a subject that they give you. I think it's three months after you got banned, you're eligible to ask for those things. So I obviously wanted to get in banned as fast as possible. And I would rather get banned for six months than 24 months back then. I have that topic and I, I don't remember what was the subject exactly, but pretty much like, yeah, why do you cheat and why it's bad to cheat and that kind of things. So as soon as I saw that, I knew that I had to admit a crime. I had to admit a crime that I didn't commit. It is what it is, you know? Um, and that would be actually 
amazing to find that letter again. A letter that I wrote when I was like 14 years old. And basically in the letter, I, I don't exactly remember what I write, but I'm like, it's pretty much like a school topic, a school thing, you know, like, I'm like, yeah, I apologize for, for chilling. I apologize for this. I shouldn't have done that because of this, this, this. Back then I just wanted to play and, 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 and play at the highest level, you know? So I did what I had to do. And that's something that is really similar to life, you know? There was a lot of times where you don't want to do something, but you do it because this is what you have to do, you know what I'm saying? I had to be perfect, so perfect. But I cleared my name, not entirely because I did the rehabilitation and that's how I got in ban, but I cleared my name by doing what I did afterwards. What did I do afterwards? Well, thanks to the help of Jerome, Nyak, Happy, Vincent, Apex, Dan, I think has been the, the help I needed and the, the, the luck on the part of luck that I needed in order to, to get where, where, where I am right now, you know? Well, that could have been terrible. That could have destroyed everything without even like starting anywhere, you know? I, it could have been like the, the, the worst thing ever to my life, literally like, I mean, look at me in other days, you know, like um, I've been quite successful in what I've done. And I, I still deal with a lot of things, a lot of responsibilities and stuff, which is great. But imagine if that thing written on my ESN page back then, people would have said, this guy is chilling, we don't even talk to him. I would have been, I don't know where, where I would have been, but that would have been hopeful for me. Thankfully, I had, it had literally had zero impact on my career. Obviously, there is always people that knew me back in the days at that time that are looking for the attention. They were like, I was with that guy, I was playing with that guy, and he told me he was cheating and stuff. And I never said such things to anyone. Let me tell you that those people are just trying to get their attention from back then, okay? Uh, the only impact it actually had before I got pro and I was too high already to, to get like touched by those toxic poison like a spit from the people. Uh, it was back before that, like just uh, being put in a in a in a in a box in a case and and like the reputation following you and to close that out on a on a better note um that day on that 2v2 the the gentleman that that write that timetable well uh that guy i i don't know like five six even seven years later i end up playing with him or against him or i don't remember in what situation and i told him you know that you got me banned you know he said yeah because i think you were cheating and stuff i said bro i was not cheating i swear to god i was not cheating and it, ha it happened that he apologized to me that's pretty much it uh with that video uh, there is a lot of things to say still there is a lot of um documents that i would love to show but that are really hard to find so if there is a worker a guy that worked in the sl back then uh please um, let me know in the comment and if you guys like the video and if you want a different story for a different time let me know i have plenty guys you know for how long i've played i know that you might uh think of kali for example kali story what happened and let me tell you that I'm trying to get Caddy uh, for a video uh, because it's been a long time, guys. So it's time for him to redeem a bit himself and, and be able to speak about his own perspective. You know, like we've all made mistakes and I think Caddy is doing really good in life lately. So it would be nice to, to know uh, what he's doing right now and that kind of thing. So thank you guys for watching the video. Let me know down in the comment if you, if you liked it, what you would want to know about myself and in general um, for the future. And um, thank you for watching. Bye. <laughs>